ode. All right. Hello. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, yesterday in your class you asked that if uh, means if it would be good if you I mean start with the basics then means if you continue with the basics I means sir it would be helpful for us if you continue with the basics. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's why I told yesterday as well uh, that uh, uh, you know few lectures I will be like very basics and then uh, we will evolve as as time allows us to do things. Yes, yes. Okay. Don't worry about that part. Okay. Uh, I know the student uh, who actually asked for that, maybe he's uh, at advanced level probably. So, but I know uh, what to do. So, so, and thanks for this uh, information. Thank I will, you. I will take care of that. Okay. Yeah, very good. All right. So uh, again, I would start to thank the organizers and especially Dr. Rohit uh, that uh, he gave me such an opportunity to interact with you people. And uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Sachindra, actually, I'm going to give you some overview of quantum mechanics till he get back with his proper, you know, connections issue and all those things. So uh, before I start, uh, can you also confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, that's very great. Uh, yes. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's very nice. So let's start with the quantum mechanics, as you can see here. I mean, uh, the picture he has, uh, I mean, obviously most of the content I got from Dr. Satendra itself. So I will try to have my best to explain what he wants to actually speak to you uh, on the basic level. And uh, for more calculational and, uh, you know, when we go for uh, like bracket notations, vector space, etc., we will be more familiarized with the uh, more tools, etc. Okay, so that should be seen uh, from here itself that when he write this quantum, so uh, you see the psi operator is there, and why it is so? So we're going to understand this uh, with a very mathematical formalism and all those stuffs, and. Uh, you know, as time will pass, uh, we will discuss more and more on that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Rupa, thank you uh, for your comment as well. I can see your chat. So, yeah. So, I'll, I'll obviously start with the basics and uh, uh, it's a really very good and very nice that you people come back to me with, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, comments. Okay. That's right. So, uh, today, I will just give you a brief overview that why quantum mechanics is necessary uh, to explain, uh, you know, what we wanted to try. For example, you had attended uh, uh, last session, yesterday's session as well, where I gave you a, a brief picture, you know, that why we need to have, you know, quantum mechanics obviously because of the small size, their classical mechanics fails to explain many, many more phenomena. And we're gonna to explain it today, okay? So uh, let's, let me move. Uh, and um, uh, so these are some of the things which I wanted to discuss. Uh, probably today I'm not gonna to, do, um, you know, complete the whole thing which I planned here. Uh, let me put the laser pointer. So I will start with the development of quantum mechanics uh, and very correlated, you know, answer is gonna to uh, given by Wien's law and Rayleigh's law, uh, which I will explain briefly because that will give you uh, some background that why actually quantum mechanics really necessity, uh, has necessary uh, inputs to explain some of the phenomena. Then after the idea is that maybe we can discuss Planck radiation law, but probably today I can't go up to that, but we'll see, okay? And then the wave function formalism where we can discuss about the wave particle duality and all those stuff, why you know people talk about this and then the mathematical formalism. 
and this will give you a basic of basically quantum mechanics and from the next to next probability session uh, i will include more and more content where uh, you know uh, for examination purpose as well as for the competition purpose we're going to understand everything point by point okay so uh, but one most important thing is that uh, we should have a prerequisite uh, to understand uh, you know quantum mechanics probably you people have learned about wave and oscillations a little bit in your uh, you know class 11th and 12th classes including thermodynamics but this statistical mechanics or statistical physics is going to be very very important uh, which i am not sure that you people have gone through but these are some of the prerequisite and i would suggest maybe um, you know we could have some a set of lectures for this also so that you know you can uh, parallelly understand the concept of which i'm going to discuss today so let's move ahead and try to understand basically about the quanta okay with an example so when we say quantum so that means it in, it comes from the word quanta okay so what in general one should understand let me ask you a question, simple question. So suppose there are uh, two person and we have uh, two liters of milk and we wanted to distribute among these two persons. So in how many ways we can distribute the milk? Can somebody think of and give me answer? So question is written very clearly. You can read also on the slide. And uh, before answering, just think, just think for a while and. Uh, sir, should it be equal, sir, for both of them? Yeah. If this is one option. Anything or else? One person is uh, half yeah. liter and another one, two, uh, one and a half liter. Type. Yeah, so so uh, that's why I'm saying that. Read the question again. What you have here? You have two liters of milk should be distributed between two persons. Okay. So, as you said, the answer lies there itself. So, if I go ahead to the answer, the answer should be in finite ways. You know. And why so? Because we don't know. Because, you know, as you said, that maybe we can give half half, or maybe somebody should take the half liter and somebody should take the one and a half liter. So, in this way, you can have uh, infinite options that milk can be distributed, you know. And uh, 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 there, 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 you see, such a, such a thing happens with the classical physics as well. Okay that you don't have any quantization for uh, distributing this. So the next question we're going to, to say that, now suppose you are restricted to distribute milk only in the units of a liter, okay? So now you fix a unit, which we call here a liter, okay? Then what could be the options? Then again, ask a question that in how many ways we can distribute the milk now? Does anybody have any answer? I hope the question is very clear now, okay? That before in the question, there was no unit, okay? So that's why we got that we have an infinitely <clears throat> divisible quantity and so, we, we can have an infinite number of ways to distribute. But now in the unit of liter, how many possibilities we have now? Please answer anything, anything you, you think of. Uh, or maybe uh, you can put in chat if you wanted to put 
uh, if you can't unmute yourself. Should it be one way, two way, three ways? Uh, how many ways now, now you have the possibilities? So I can see that uh, there are two answers, that is two ways. So you are very close to the answer, but you are not giving the right answer. So now you see with this unit, we can have three options. That both person can receive only zero, one or two liters of milk, okay? So uh, obviously there are two liters of milk I can say that, okay, one person can take two liters, okay? But we can also say that, okay, one one liter can be distributed. So if I put someone to have two liters, you know, then obviously the another is gonna to get a zero liter, okay? So when you calculate these stuff, these, these kind of calculation, you basically need some kind of idea you might have learned in the probabilistic theories. And I think probability is gonna to introduce uh, probably earlier in your 10th class or ninth class or somewhere in the 12th class itself. So that's the probability. So the idea of quanta comes like this way. Similarly, let's suppose one more. Uh, so, so you see the wonderful way of doing this kind of unitization we get infinite number of ways if we don't have a unit. But the moment we unitized, we get the three options. So this changes basically drastically our options. Okay. And that's why, uh, and that's why with this drastic change, one can say that the number of ways may be increased to five if we reduce the units to half a liter. And similarly, you can go on and you can say that, okay, I wanted to just give uh, one fourth of uh, this liter, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that will give you an idea that what basically quantum means. First thing is that, second thing is that, that you need to use some kind of probability theory here. Okay, so we're gonna to explore this in quantum mechanics throughout by having a beautiful mathematical constructions. Uh, but obviously that will take a little bit of time to go up to that, that how quantum mechanics should be built up. But before that, we will try to go ahead with the, some kind of background, some history. And uh, uh, this particular theme, which I just presented to you to just have an understanding that what quanti basically quantization means, and if you look at the yesterday's lecture, in yesterday's session, I also mentioned about the charge and the charge was also quantized. And that was like plus one of the proton charge and minus one for the electron charge, okay? So this is called quantization, okay? And that's like the quantum field theory, I'm mean, sorry, the quantum mechanics where we're gonna to explain these whole things, not in the classical way, but in a very different mathematical construction. And that's a very beautiful construction you're gonna to, to see in this course, okay? So I hope uh, at least a little bit of uh, quantization, quantum mechanics, and these terms are go going to be very clear to you. But the question is now, why, okay? So let's try to answer this, that why we need to quantize uh, our theory, okay? So the reason lies the failure of classical physics with some of the experimental observations where some microscopic phenomena are not gonna to be explained using the classical physics. So for example, you do some experiment, okay? 
probably you have done in your uh, you know uh, plus two classes as well some experiments and also in your graduation undergrad you basically you know go through your experiments so what do you do you make a log file you make some tables uh, with numbers and observations and then you plot you know and you plot a function uh, uh, with respect to some let's suppose there are two quantities x and y then you write uh, y as a function of x and try to plot it by uh, the experiment but if you do that experiment and you get some kind of curve let's suppose let me draw it here okay so uh, so that it could be very familiar to you that what i actually meant for so let's suppose you have a quantity uh, which is uh, some kind of function of x okay so you do some experiment so what do you do you choose different values of x in x axis okay and uh, then you plot in y axis this function fx okay so for some value you will choose that okay this is the uh, this is my x point this is origin so with origin uh, fx behaves something like here something like this something like that you know similarly for different point you choose that okay this uh, value gives me this one uh, this value give me this one and then you try to actually plot something like this with experimental points okay but now you wanted to fit this in some kind of theory so here you can see this function behaves differently at different positions so for example let's suppose if something is uh, some function is giving like this you can say that okay this function looks like that this is kind of exponential decay and you can say this is something like some constant times e minus x or something like this okay if it is a straight line then you can say that no i mean this function behaves like something like you know mx uh, plus c uh, uh, which is the equation of a straight line and accordingly you know you fit your uh, uh, theoretical inputs and then you can take uh, take the evolution of that with respect to you know whatever you want uh, for the futuristic experiment as well but if you have functions like this then there is a difficulty oh this is a complicated function now how, how i can do this okay so classical physics also tries to explain some of the phenomena like the black body radiation uh, photoelectric effect compton effect you know then this things basically the classical physics which we learned from the you know newtonian times is completely break down okay it's not able to explain uh, like this because experimental observation says some different graph but if you try to fit with a function with a classical uh, you know explanation uh, it's going to fail and those uh, actually experiments are very correlated like this and i'm going to you know explain everything basically i'm going to explain black body radiation uh photoelectric effect compton effect atomic stability uh you know atomic spectroscopy gman effect raman effect and also about the wave particle duality uh, these are the integral part of the quantum mechanics where you can get expertise and also the application of quantum mechanics is very wide whether you talk about the modern physics whether you talk about the you know nuclear physics and also in the further interviews and all the stuff okay so this is the overall picture that why actually one has to uh, transport themselves from classical physics to you know quantum physics okay so what is quantum mechanics so in a very simple manner we can say that quantum mechanics is a mathematical model of the physics world which i already explained why it is mathematical and how we going to do that obviously in future you know sessions we will discuss those things and this describes the behavior of matter and light on the atomic and subatomic level okay so this is overall because you know if you don't go into the atomic and subatomic level uh, uh, which we can see by our eyes our naked eyes 
then we can obviously explain that with the beautiful theories, which is available for the classical mechanics. You know, like gravity, you explain it very beautifully with the gravitational forces and et cetera, okay? But uh, as I said, some of the things we can't explain at the atomic and subatomic level. So quantum mechanics is the, or quantum physics uh, is, the, is the tool through which we can explain those, you know, observations accordingly, okay? So now let's uh, go a little bit of uh, development of quantum mechanics, how it developed. So the very first observation in 1900 was uh, uh, something called energy of photon in a black body radiation, okay? So uh, I'm going to explain what black body means and what this, uh, you know, so light is coming and then it is scattering within the, uh, this body and there is no, uh, you can see there is, that's why we call it as a black, black body because energy is not radiated from this. Okay, this chamber. So I'm going to explain it more uh, in the next slide that what black body is, et cetera, and uh, how people started thinking about uh, that should we need to quantize our energy or it is a continuous distribution of energy. And I will also explain that what do you mean by contribution? I mean, the distribution of energy continuous. If it would be continuous, then why it is continuous? If it is not, then why we need to quantize, okay? So here are the notations, let me just clarify. This E is energy, H is the quantization. Uh, generally we call, I mean, use it sometime H cut as well, which is uh, Planck's constant. And I will explain it again further. And here, this is called nu, and this nu means the frequency, okay? And this could be, uh, this frequency is basically correlated with the a speed of light C divided by the lambda, which is wavelength, okay? And this you have, uh, you must have read in your wave and oscillation, uh, you know, topics. So, but obviously I will explain everything, you know, uh, bite by bite as, as we go ahead. Then, and this was actually developed by Max, okay? So Max Planck uh, basically tries to uh, before that, basically, Weems and Rayleigh also tries to fit some of the black body radiation phenomena, uh, you know, to explain with the classical physics, but it was not happened. And then Max came with a very beautiful idea that why not we quantize the energy and try to fit the, you know, experimental data point. And that was a very successful theory. Then Albert Einstein came and he got a novel for that as well, where he talk about the photoelectric effect, okay? So it is something like if you have metal, then uh, if some energy, or you can say if uh, light, uh, you know, collide with this uh, surface, then one electron is released, then how are we gonna do basically explain this phenomena? And then he uh, wrote very beautiful, uh, you know, phenomena that basically this energy is also a quantization where work function of metal is having some, you know, a frequency, and that is going to be managed with the kinetic energy and all those things. So I will explain it also. And this era was uh, 1905, just five years after Max basically explained the phenomena of uh, uh, black body radiation. Okay, we will go everything bit by bit, but uh, you know, uh, we have to first develop the ideas. Then after. Uh, you know, uh, because there was uh, many atomic model before Bohr's, uh, but in 1913, uh, he also used, uh, you know, the atomic uh, to, to explain the atomic theory that why, uh, what kind of atomic model uh, should be built up. And apart from energy, which you can see in these two uh, phenomena, here Bohr also took that formula, that is the change in energy between this uh, shop cells uh, should be quantized. Apart from that, your angular momentum should also be quantized in terms of the integer multiple of the, you know, the edge cut, okay? And that was happened in 1913. So this is the quantum mechanics beautifully explain, uh, you know, uh, the atomic model thereafter. 
Then comes one another phenomena, which we called Compton scattering. And we will explain it in a more detail uh, uh, that what Compton scattering means, etc. And this was done by you know, Arthur H. Compton in 1923. And so these are some beautiful things which quantum mechanics can you know, explain uh, as I mentioned before you know, in, the, in the slides. Then come with the idea in 1924 by De Broglie. And De Broglie uh, basically, uh, you know, because uh, there is something called wave particle duality. That particle has some properties, wave has some properties. But when you do this experiment at the microscopic level, particles behave like waves sometimes. And uh, that's why people was confused that uh, really it is a particle or it is a wave, okay? So this was explained very beautifully by the quantization of, uh, you know, uh, momentum itself. And uh, that was also the quantization limit was again, this H cut. So this is very, you know, uh, very uh, kind of phenomena, which is very, very important to understand quantum mechanics uh, behavior uh, of, uh, you know, microscopic particles uh, in terms of quantum mechanics. So, and that was happened in 1924. So he's a very, very, uh, you know, intelligent guy at that time. <clears throat> then Warren Heisenberg come and uh, he basically gave a very basic idea uh, in 1927 about the uncertainty principle. And this uncertainty principle basically defines, for example, in classical mechanics, you have done a lot of problems and you might have seen that if at some position, uh, something, uh, if some time at any time, if position is given, then you can calculate momentum very easily, okay? but in quantum me mechanics, you can't do that. Why it is so? Why it is going to be happen like that? And we can generalize this, uh, you know, uncertainty principle in terms of the energy and time, and also the angular momentum and the angles. Okay, and we will see that this is a half integral multiple uh, of uh, you know the product of this. So why it is so, why not so? I mean, we're going to, have to understand this principle as well. And that was developed in 1927. So you can see the journey of quantum mechanics to explain uh, various phenomena that started with 1900. And now we have 27 years and we are developing such uh, beautiful theories to explain many of the phenomena at the microscopic level. Now the question is, as you had seen in classical mechanics, that Newtonian law basically explain a differential equation. So you know that F equal to MA, generally you write that, right? But in general, this is a differential equation, right? So you can say that force is nothing but mass times, or mass rather we can say the inertial mass times the change in momentum with respect to time, okay? So this is a kind of differential equation. So if you know force, you can always write that equation and you can just calculate whatever you want. Hmm. But what about quantum mechanics? In quantum mechanics, how are we gonna to write such an equation? Okay, so then Schrodinger came in 1926 and he developed uh, which is, you know, along with, you can say at the same time when uncertainty principle came and all those stuff. And then he wrote a very beautiful equation, which can explain, uh, you know, uh, the evolution of, uh, uh, you can say the behavior of the molecular particles, or you can say the microscopic particles uh, in terms of, uh, you know, these differential equation. So, why I would say that? Because you can see that this, uh, this psi is basically a wave function, uh, which, which is giving you a time evolution because we take a psi evolution with respect to time here and H cut is the quanta. And you can see this is completely a kinetic energy term. So delta S square is nothing but a differential 
uh, del 2 by del x2 plus del 2 by del y2, blah, 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 which I will explain also in the mathematical, uh, I mean, uh, in the electrodynamics as well, that what that means, etc. So this is a kinetic term and this is a potential term. So the, you, you can see the, the total energy is basically equal to uh, I H cut times the Delta Psi over Delta T. Then you can say that how basically your wave particles are, you know, evolve according to the time. Okay. And that's kinetics is very, very important when we, you know, develop such a theory, which already you used in the, you know, Newton's law, etc. Okay. So we will explain that. Uh, very uh, and there are two notations which people generally use. Either they use uh, you know the expansion of psi as a wave function, etc. Also, there are bracket informations, uh, bracket uh, notations uh, in the vector space, etc. So we will take both the opportunities to explain to you. It it might take a little bit of time to go up to that point, but we will explain that that how these equations are going to be important for you. So this was a very, very important from uh, contribution from Schrodinger. And then Dirac actually explained uh, a phenomena, which is obviously you not gonna to uh, learn at this stage at undergrad level, this is not uh, included because this Dirac equation use a special theory of relativity as well as quantum mechanics. And that built up a quantum field theory, which I explained yesterday actually. And you people have noticed that I mentioned that quantum field theory has the fourth block where you have the tiniest size as well as you have the highest speed. Okay. So there you in a, there you need to develop a theory which is relativistic. Okay. So that should be relativistic quantum mechanics. And that relativistic quantum mechanics basically called as a quantum field theory. And there you can explain that via the Dirac equation. So we are not going to touch up on this, uh, but yeah, a brief uh, knowledge is enough uh, that what basically, you know, uh, what is the beauty of quantum mechanics altogether throughout the development, okay? So this is a very nice, you know, picture, which I uh, tried to put in all, uh, all together so that you can have an understanding that how basically quantum mechanics evolved, okay? So, okay, so till now, uh, if you have any question, maybe we can discuss that. Or if you have any curiosity to understand anything which I probably forgot or something like that. All right, so it's a uh, silence, so it means I should go ahead. And now come to the very first point to understand the black body radiation. And probably today I will stop by explaining black body because I know quantum mechanics is not very easily digestible thing. So uh, we should go slowly, slowly. And once time evolve, uh, we can go uh, with the many more content on that, okay? So let's try to understand the very first phenomena which people try to explain uh, and that phenomena is known as the black body radiation. So what is black body radiation? <clears throat> so by definition, uh, black body radiation or uh, black body, the definition of black body is something which can absorb all the radiation. As I said uh, earlier, and the picture which I showed uh, that in a black body, what is going to happen the moment, uh, you know, light incident within this body, it you know, it is scattered within themselves and, uh, you know, it will confine completely here, okay? It will not come out, okay? So, so that's why it called a black body. So it's a perfect black body if nothing is going to radiate it up from, from, from the body itself, okay? So for example, uh, the, the, this phenomena in platinum uh, have, happens that it absorbs almost 98% of the incident uh, radiation, okay? So this is one of the example, uh, maybe in some competitive exams or somewhere it, it could be asked and uh, you can just remember that platinum is the one which is taking the uh, highest, you know, uh, or, or behave like a 
uh, in 98 percent absorptions as a black body. Okay, so this is the picture which I already explained that light incident in there, and it is scattered completely within that, and the energy is going to be stored within itself, and the radiation is going to be very very minimal. Uh, and that's why we call it as a black body radiation. Now, the thing is that if such phenomena happens, one need to explain it, you know, that's the physics. So how are we going to explain it? So you will try because quantum mechanics was not developed till now, till, till that time. So people tried it with the classical ways and what were the problems? So let me discuss those things and then we will move ahead with some of the, you know, calculations, etc. Uh, okay, so one more definition, uh, so uh, which I already actually mentioned, but let me read it for you. So a perfectly black body consists of a hollow sphere with a small hole in its surface, like you can see here. The inner surface is coated with lamp black, something like this, okay? And any radiation entering the sphere through the hole suffers multiple reflections at the inner surfaces, as you can see that light incident, and then it reflected, reflected from all the surfaces and all the energy is confined within this body, okay? So this is the whole definition of black body. <clears throat> now, you do the experiment, okay? And try to see the distribution of energy in the spectrum of a black body. And that's the spectrum which we can see. So here, uh, you know, uh, uh, we calculate uh, energy, which is a function of lambda. And uh, we calculate it with respect to some unit, let's say watt per meter square angstrom. And lambda is the wavelength uh, given in the micrometer. And you can see some behavior that at different temperature, it behaves something different, okay? So you can see, uh, that once you increase the temperature, okay? So this is very important points to uh, actually explain here. Mm. That what we observe from experiment, and that's what we, you did in the experiment, uh, experimental physics as well, whether you did in your class 11th, 12th, or even in metric, or even in your undergrad, if you do some experiment, as I said before, you generally try to plot your observables, with respect to the function, what it is. And then you try to learn that why it is happening. So in experiment, uh, let's, uh, let's suppose what we did here. So we have a temperature of 2000 Kelvin and we try to do this experiment. And we saw that uh, uh, this E lambda, which is a function of lambda behaves like something like this, okay? so. Similarly, if you increase the temperature to 3000 3, Kelvin, something like this you will see. Similarly for 4000 K and 5000 K, okay? And uh, you know that there is a visible reason, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the, uh, for light, which is visible basically. And uh, that visible reason is here. Below that, there is an ultraviolet reason. And after that, you have an infrared reason, okay? So this is our observation. So from this observation, what we learned or what we wanted to try to get in, okay? So the very first thing is that we need to observe any graph, okay? So even in your experimental uh, classes, you might have observed many things and you can explain that, okay, so if I increase this, then something is happening and that's why this function behaves like this, etc. So the same thing we're gonna to actually observe here and we try to see, uh, you know, that what is happening. So very first point, which you can see from uh, this graph itself, that as temperature increases, this peak of E lambda is basically moving towards the uh, lower uh, or higher frequency, but lower wavelength. As you can see, that peak is here, okay? So it is going uh, this side. So, so let me, let me you know, explain this uh, by, by writing itself. So what is happening here? So as the temperature increases, E lambda for every wavelength increases, as you can see, 
Okay. So what that means, wavelength is increasing and then E lambda is basically going, going, going up to some point. Okay. It increases and then after it decreases. Okay. So, so the, the very first, the very first uh, um, observation is that if you increase the temperature. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, what does this E lambda denotes? Yeah, so E lambda, as I said, uh, we say lambda. So mm -hmm. this is either it could be a power spectrum of the black body, or you can say the total energy density. Okay. Because uh, these things uh, can be converted into different variables. So here E lambda represents uh, the energy density, you can say. Okay. <clears throat> And lambda denotes that it is okay, a function sir. of lambda. That is the function of wavelength. Okay. I, I will show you that you can change the variables as well. And I will show you in the next uh, slide. Okay. So what we learn from here, the very first thing is that if you increase the temperature, your energy density is basically increasing. All right. Uh, can you see this? I mean, is the statement correct? So, so what is basically the energy, uh, uh, how, how you calculate that? So we're going to have this integral. I mean, you can just integrate the whole region and you can find the area and you can see that this area, the area which is uh, for 2000 Kelvin is less than the area for the 3000 Kelvin. Similarly, 3000 is less than the 4000 Kelvin. If you calculate the whole uh, region or you can just uh, sum up or you can say the integrate uh, the whole region, the whole area is going to be larger at that, you know, larger temperature. So that's what the means by the first uh, observation. Okay, this is a very simple observation. Also, another observation you can have that at constant temperature, let's suppose we just take one temperature, 5000 Kelvin. So what is happening here? So we can see once lambda is increases, E lambda also increases till its value becomes maximum and then it decreases. So uh, if you say in 5,000 Kelvin, uh, it goes up to some lambda and you know you get uh, some maximum peak. It is not like it is just going, going up, up and up, up. It's, it's not like that. But what is happening? That it goes up to some maximum value and then it decreases, okay? Uh, according to the lambda. And at some lambda, you see it is maximum, but then it decreases for other lambdas, which is wavelength. Okay. Now another observation is that the peak of E lambda shifts toward a shorter wavelength. Okay. So the moment you have the you know higher and higher temperature, it, it moves towards the shorter wavelength. As you can see, the peak is like like this one. Okay, and it goes like this direction. Also. The area enclosed, which I already discussed, uh, between the curve at any absolute temperature T and the excess wavelength, wavelength lambda, this integral, which is basically the total energy, you can say, increases rapidly with increase of temperature. And this area represents the total radiation emitted per unit area per second by uh, this, this denote power spectrum of black body at absolute temperature T over all wavelengths. And you know you can observe many more things as you go on, and uh, then the question is, can we explain it with the classical physics or not? Okay, so I'm just you know going slowly on that. The reason is because you know uh, whenever you see any plot or any graph like that, this is going to be very helpful for your experimental physics classes as well that whenever you see any, any distribution or any such kind of plot, don't just plot it, okay? Try to understand what physics is basically going on there and why it is so, why it is behaving like that. Ask a lot of questions among ourselves that why it is behaving like this. Okay, let's suppose, let me tween the parameter again with some different numbers, with some different things, you know, some different inputs and try to see that the behavior is same or different, okay? As you can see, that if people believe that, okay, 2000 Kelvin is okay for me, then you can't observe the, uh, you know, another thing. Like, you know, we have observed like at 3000 K, this peak basically shift. 
okay so these are some of the important uh, thing uh, you know when you learn physics you should also do uh, these stuff by yourself and develop you know you, you evolve your mind accordingly okay so having this uh, you know classical physics basically fails to explain this spectrum and in this diagram i showed one of the thing which has been done by rayleigh jeans law or you can say the classical physics basically you know goes down because if i write a equation okay to explain this kind of behavior that equation doesn't fit with this and uh, it only fits in the region where you have uh, you know the, the the wavelength is basically uh, at a very large or something like that okay so this is one of the diagram which i uh, you know uh, took it from uh, one of the paper and there it shows that uh, only planck radiation formula can explain this curve or the experimental curve but not the religion's law so here classical physics basically fails and we will also talk about the ultraviolet catastrophe which says that the discrepancy at a small wavelength becomes known as i mean uh, at a small wavelength means at these wavelengths we we are not able to explain this etc and mathematically we will see that why this is basically happen but in general you can say that this is a classical physics curve okay and one thing i should wanted to remind you when when you see this kind of graph you can see not only with respect to the you know wavelength but also sometimes people draw it with respect to the frequency so if you do that with frequency the formula which i shown before that frequency frequen, uh, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other then you will see that the curve is at different position but explain the same phenomena what that means it means like that so to explain excuse uh, me sir. yes sir what is the meaning of the word discrepancy oh uh, sorry i mean discrepancy means a uh, difference you can say or uh, you can say something uh, uh, or what could be the uh, i mean I, i i can't translate it so discrepancy in a sense that if you have something to explain okay with some uh, classical physics for example some phenomena you wanted to explain okay but uh, you can't explain it you know so you, you wanted to explain it with a the classical theory the black body radiation for example uh, and try to fit in you will see that this is not matching okay so that's the discrepancy means okay okay so 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 this could be like something which i wanted to tell here that this kind of graph as you can see if you draw with respect to wavelength your religion's law basically you know explain the phenomena uh, with uh, with some higher lambda here but uh, uh, for the lower reason only wine's formula is going to help us okay but if you see the pictures uh, they, they they look different you see here so if you draw with wavelength so i am just giving you again and again you know focus on that that what is given if in a, in your exam or in an, any competition or even in any interview people will say that okay draw this uh, black body radiation formula and uh, you know try to uh, give us three curves which was explained by planck which was explained by wines which was explained by rale then if it is with respect to wavelength then you see uh, you have to write something like that okay so this is the curve uh, for religions this is the experiment and this is the wines however if you transform it in the, in the in the in the terms of uh, frequency because as i said that lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency then you will see that the curve basically uh, you know 
having the opposite behavior. So here you can see now, so in this wines is here, but in here you see wines is here. Okay, however, allergies lie at this point. Okay, so be careful. You know, whenever you see this 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 kind of graph, don't uh, you know be confused that oh no, I had seen that religions basically you know uh, fails at this level and explain uh, you know higher lambdas uh, and winces like that. Then why I'm seeing uh, like this? So just note down that in the x-axis you have frequency rather than prevalent. Okay, so just to uh, be 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 precautious when you, uh, you know, talk about such kind of thing, okay? So you see, I mean, you might have think that why I'm going these things into so many of details. The reason is that I had seen, uh, obviously because I'm teaching from long time, I had seen that the student generally do mistakes uh, by, you know, uh, failing to understand the graphs itself, okay? Because he or she didn't point it out the actual picture uh, which they wanted to be on focused on okay so this is what uh, you know uh, lies that uh, the the picture lies that classical physics basically fails to explain energy distribution of the black body okay and that is why one has to come with some new formalism and you know explain this accordingly all right so this is some of the, I mean, I started with the black body, as I said, and then we will go through another phenomena also at the atomic spectra, et cetera, yeah. So till now, is there any question or any clarification if needed, I will try to explain. Sir, uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, is there any relation between black body and black hole? No, no, no. Uh, you see, you, you, yeah. So the thing is that uh, uh, at some point of time, when we say black hole, black hole basically is some kind of, you can say, a space where nothing can come out. Okay. Uh, we, we, we saw that in the universal aspect. Uh, and uh, there are similarity when we say black hole and black body radiation, there are similarities, but that at the very high level of, uh, you know, when you talk about general theory of relativity and try to merge with your quantum theory as well, then you will see uh, that there is a little bit of, little bit of difference, but yeah, I mean, the name basically comes like this, okay? Why we say black? Because nothing is radiated, okay? So we try to explain that black hole. I am not an expert of black hole uh, theory, but uh, my students basically work on some of the phenomena where you know some black body radiations uh, cause because of uh, you know some some differential distributions, etc. Uh, uh, but uh, I would say that the explanations are going to be maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe in quantum mechanics we can we can talk about that. If you read um, quantum mechanics by Griffith, then in one of the chapters he also explained some some something like that. I don't remember, but you can you can see that. Okay, hmm. uh, because uh, this this is something like a cosmological phenomena. Okay, where you have to turn out with uh, many such kind of theories that. Uh, and and you can say in one sense you are right that uh, but I can't say hundred percent that you know your black body is similar we can say similar like black hole but uh, with my understanding uh, I would say something like that okay but yes both the phenomena are like uh, you know but but their equations uh, they they use uh, you know. They also use quantization and quantum mechanics to explain those things, but those differential equations are a little bit complicated comparing to if you try to explain this black body only. Okay, that is a little bit different. Little bit different. Okay, because you know you you have to talk about uh, you know I should not go into detail, 
but then you have to talk about different spins of black hole as well you know the spin structure is coming into picture when you talk about black hole okay uh, but in this black body what we are saying here here we are not talking about the spin structure okay so so that's why i'm saying that yes i mean uh, in one sense you can have the similarities but obviously there is a more complications when we talk about the black hole all right very good very good that you asked that question uh, and uh, i will also try to look at some of the details if if something is very relevant then i will i will try to discuss here also very good excuse me all sir. right yeah please and sir why is that so that all the radiation is absorbed in case of black body yeah so that's the black body uh, uh, phenomena okay that sometime what is happening that we wanted to have uh energy to be stored somewhere okay and that's why you can see here that we define a black body in such a manner that we can store the energy and use it for some purpose you know you understand my point so uh, so that you yes, know uh, that heat can be used for some purpose let's suppose some physical thing where you wanted to have a very high energy and that high energy can be used it okay so such such kind of phenomena are very interesting uh, uh, as a, as a, eventually if you wanted to explain about sun you know in in my childhood sometime you know uh, we we were read that oh there are coals which are burning you know uh, but then the theory changes and it evolves like no 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 it is just like heliums and hydrogens which are basically having the reactions and then you know something is going to happen like that and then energy is radiated in the sun or in the star okay so you see i mean the thing is that i mean we are evolving to understand the nature and the moment we having the you know more and more knowledge we try to explain it accordingly uh, according to some mathematical descriptions as well okay very good 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 i i really like the discussions that uh, that should follow Uh, to understand the concepts so uh, probably i will i'll just explain because i have introduced uh, two things one is the wine's law and uh, also uh, religions so i will try to introduce a little bit of that and then i will stop today's uh, session uh, so uh, excuse me sir yeah sir one thing i would like to know sir uh, in this black body radiation if you say that some i mean uh, energy or radiation is stored sir mm -hmm. then can't we say that here law of conservation of energy will violate oh well how you can say that energy uh, it's not violated at all what sir how you can say oh, that sir. it is violated I mean sir if it is stored then at some point of uh, time it should be spent you see yeah so so you see the point is that obviously we can we can't have a perfect black body at all okay energy conservation okay, so. what it says if you say energy conservation it means that energy is converted into different forms that forms could be some heat some sound or uh, maybe some actions and if you calculate the total energy it should be conserved okay so okay, it is sir. not like that since black body have the total energy it means energy is not no it's like that you have to count the all all uh, you know contribution whether it is from the uh, whether you calculate the light or not whether you calculate the sound whether you calculate the heat and when you sum up then you will see that this is basically conserved okay so the the thing is like that hmm? very good so okay, com coming yeah so coming back to uh, two well known classical laws which i just shown in the diagrams about the wine's law and uh, and the religion's law uh, which was the classical laws so there are limitations which you already seen from the graph but oh, you know some mathematical filling should be there and that mathematical filling is basically correlated with the statistical mechanics that you should have learned or if you haven't learned then maybe in the thermodynamics and uh, you know uh, and the statistical mechanics you're going to learn those things also 
I don't know that uh, you know a, they they have arranged this lecture yet or not, but maybe I will ask uh, the organizer that they have they have to have thermodynamics and statistical physics as well in parallel so that we can you know go with uh, this kind of things. All right, so uh, let's first uh, discuss about the Wine's radiation formula. So in 1986, Wine derived the form, uh, formula for uh, you know, uh, this radiation. As I said in the introduction of uh, my session itself, that if you find something in experiment, you try to fit in with some equations, okay? So Wine did that. He derived something like E lambda D lambda equal to C1 over lambda five uh, exponential of minus C2 divided by lambda T D lambda, okay? So where obviously lambda is the wavelength and is the energy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you see this equation itself that uh, he shows that uh, this is basically inversely proportional to the fifth power of wavelength. And uh, it is also multiplied. So this is just a kind of constant. And then it is multiplied with the exponential function so that one can have the graph which we had seen. Okay, but we already seen that, uh, you know, it only explain one of the reason, not the full spectrum of black body. Okay, uh, C1 and C2 are constants. And then to obtain, uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, actually important to explain that why, uh, I mean, how basically he conceived that formula. Okay, so to, to come up with this formula, he assumed that the radiation inside uh, a hollow enclosure is produced by resonators of molecular dimensions, okay? So this is very important to understand that why resonators, why resonators means what, why we are talking about molecular dimensions. And that is why I said that you should have some basics of thermodynamics, including the statistical physics, where you need to understand that once we, say this resonance or resonators, uh, what that means. So as time will pass, you know, I will also explain uh, for the timing, I haven't uh, prepared anything uh, regarding some of the background of this, uh, but let's, for the timing, let's understand this, that these are the assumptions. And then maybe if you have a question, we can, uh, in the next session, maybe I will try to explain what resonators means or, what we mean by molecular dimensions, et cetera, okay? Second thing, uh, which uh, uh, he assumed that the frequency of radiation emitted is proportional to the kinetic energy of the resonator, okay? And third, that the intensity of the radiation of any particular wavelength is proportional to the number of resonators having required amount of energy, okay? So these are some of the assumptions which he followed to explain this by having this formula. So th this you should just remember by some kind of history, but in, as I repeating again and again, in a statistical physics, you're gonna to have the whole idea that what this means, why it is dependent on temperature, why he is writing some formula like that and how it is, you know, dependent on each other. So as we had seen in the, uh, in the graph, which I showed before, that there is a limitations that this formula explains the experimental results fairly well for low values of wavelength only. Okay, so uh, this is this is what about Wine's radiation which we learned, and then comes the next one, uh, the Rayleigh's law, and here uh, Rayleigh actually applied this in 1900, uh, the principle of equipartition of energy to the electromagnetic vibrations. Okay, and this equipartition of energy you might have learned in your uh, class 11th itself, where uh, you might uh, go with the wave and oscillations and some, some kind of temperature chapter where you could talk about the equipartition of energy. And if you say, I mean, I will explain it, uh, you know, maybe in the next lecture or next session somewhere. If you, if you have the background, then that would be very fine. Uh, otherwise, you know, this quantum mechanics is going to be like forever. So, so uh, it would be better if you read it by yourself or maybe in, uh, you know, 
if, if you say I will, I will try to devote one session on these terminologies as well. Okay. Then uh, along with Relic, uh, you know, a contribution from genes came up uh, where he attempted uh, to the deduction of formula for energy per unit volume, uh, which I said again and again, you asked about what is E lambda. So that this is called energy density. Okay. Inside an enclosure with a perfectly reflecting walls. Okay. So here, what he did uh, basically, he tries to find a range of frequency. Okay. So let's suppose at some point of time, there is a frequency called nu. And after a little bit of divergence, you can say that uh, frequency is nu plus t nu. Something like you say, uh, something like you, uh, you measure something at some point of time that the value of that particular function is one. And you try to calculate at a very infinitesimal time. Uh, let's suppose you calculated at, uh, you know, uh, five at 5 p.m. you calculated something and now you try to see that at 501 that means 5 p.m. added with the one second what is going to happen so something like that he did okay with a frequency range and then he gave the formula in terms of uh, u nu d nu he represented either I mean, you can represent it in terms of lambda or frequency, as I said, that they are correlated because it is correlated with the speed of light. So he wrote u nu d nu as a equal to eight pi nu squared divided by c cube kt d nu. Okay, and therefore, uh, yeah. So I already explained that u nu is the energy per unit volume per unit frequency range at frequency u. K is the Boltzmann constant. Okay. This is also a very nice history of Boltzmann constant, which you might have learned in thermodynamic courses. Uh, if not, then, uh, you know, again, maybe it could be best that if you could have a separate uh, sessions for thermodynamic and statistical mechanics. Okay. Uh, because there are many things to understand before going through this all formulas and all, uh, you know, terminologies that we are using. So uh, this could be transformed in terms of lambda as well. Uh, as we know that uh, you know frequency is basically uh, nothing but uh, it is c square over lambda so you can always uh, transform this and after transformation you can see that nu equal to c over lambda d nu is equal to minus c over lambda square d lambda uh, and why it is so because you know in uh, the integral let me write it for you to just remind uh, but i know that you people know this integral so if you have something like, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, x to the power n dx, uh, the integral, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's, it's just a differential basically, not the integral, let me erase this. Uh, where is the eraser? So, yeah. mm. so, so if you try to differentiate something like this function, uh, then you know that uh, this is simply uh, dxn over dx, then this should be something like n over xn minus one, okay? So by using this formula, you can always calculate that, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, your u nu d nu should be something like minus c over lambda square d lambda. And then, uh, you, uh, you can observe that the energy in a frequency interval is equal to that the contained in a corresponding wavelength interval and an increase in frequency corresponds to decrease in the wavelength because they are inversely proportional. Okay, this is the physics behind that. And that is why I focused on the plot as well that you had seen that in a frequency, how you're going to plot in the wavelength, how you're going to plot, you see the inverse, you know, uh, spectrum accordingly. So then after you can write something like u lambda d lambda is minus of u nu d nu. And then you can transform this, uh, the whole formula in terms of lambda and this u nu d, uh, you know, this u nu d nu is basically going to be u lambda d lambda and substitute all the values like this. And then you're going to get 8 pi kt over lambda 4 uh, d lambda, okay? So you can see in the Relegin's law, I mean, this lambda is 
uh, basically the energy density is proportional to the fourth power of lambda, inversely proportional to the fourth power of lambda, okay? And there is no exponential term involved till now, okay? So this only explain the long values of the wavelength rather not the total wavelength of the function, okay? So this is the difference between Relegin's law and the Wien's law uh, that one can explain only at the very long values of wavelength. However, one can only explain at the low values of the wavelength, but not the complete theory comes up like that, okay? And that is why one need to explain it with a very updated formalism. And that formalism basically, basically comes, uh, okay, I mean, these are some of the things uh, which you can, uh, I mean, you can calculate the total energy of the radiation by integrating this uh, differential, uh, you know, uh, density, uh, energy density from zero to infinite, and you will get that U is basically infinite. Uh, if you calculate the whole energy. And that is called the discrepancy, which is uh, known as the ultraviolet catastrophe, okay? Which I showed in the, in the figure itself, okay? So uh, with this, I would, uh, you know, uh, like to end today's session because I know there are many, many things which uh, probably hindered your mind, you know, and uh, there are many terminologies that we need to use for understanding the quantum mechanics part. Uh, so it would be better that you can have some background of thermodynamics and uh, you know, statistical mechanics. And um, that's it for uh, today, okay? Then uh, in the next session, we will try to develop uh, a quantization of the theory. And we will try to see that how basically it fits uh, you know, uh, maybe I can just give you some brief idea that, uh, and I will, you know, again, uh, repeat these things uh, in terms of the half wavelengths and uh, all the, you know, that is why I said that you need to have the wave and oscillations, including with the thermodynamics, including with the statistic mechanics, and then only we're going to, to understand the formalism of quantum mechanics in total, okay? So I will explain these things in the next uh, session. Uh, and till now, if you have any question, then maybe you can ask. Anything? Or sir, is it yes. Sir, in with the radiation formula, I mean, in equation, there is an exponential term. So yeah. its graph will always show exponential decay. I can't hear you probably. Uh, I mean that exponential up. term. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand so your in, question, uh, however. Wins radiation yeah, formula. so in Wins, yeah, Wins radiation in... formula, you say that this is the exponential term, right? Okay. So this is in terms of the lambda. Yes. Sir. All right. So if you see the behavior uh, in terms of lambda, uh, you, you will see that there is something called like this function, okay? Why this comes? So this you could always plot. Uh, do people use Mathematica sometimes frequently? Or maybe in the next session, I will, I will show you that why this, uh, you know, uh, how, how this function basically behave, okay? I will try to show you in the mathematical file itself that how this function, if you, if you, if you, uh, I mean, you can also try that you have this function, okay, just this function, okay, just put some constant value one to whatever you want, okay, and vary your lambda, fix the temperature, okay, and try to see that how this function basically behaves, because you see, I mean, not only you have the exponential function, which is, uh, you know, uh, like you, you said that it is like a decreasing, but you see there is a term which is, uh, you know, uh, sitting here, okay? So when you do this, uh, you will find that this plot is going to behave something like, uh, you know, something like this, okay? And, uh, you know, I have not the tools ready here, otherwise I could have shown you, uh, or maybe in the next session, I will, I will show you again, okay? 
Any other question? Okay, sir. Yeah. So, so I will try to show you, uh, uh, you know, that how, how basically this comes, but I would say that you try first, okay? And then I will show you particularly, um, you know, by using simple uh, mathematics there, uh, using the mathematical facts, etc. Any other question? Or anything else, uh, if I'm going very slow or should I move a little bit faster or whatever? I mean, as you as you say, I mean, uh, I will I will try to yeah, and I will also try to upload this recording uh, to YouTube. I don't know how to do that, but I will learn, and uh, I will do that. Uh, and maybe you can if if you left with something, you know, you can ask in uh, you know second session uh, at some point of time. Yeah, I can hear something, but uh, somebody wants to talk. Okay, so if there is no question, let me end the session uh, today. Okay, and uh, see you in the next session where we will start to look up to that if these two classical physics uh, fails, then how quantum physics is going to help us okay but before that i mean if you people just say me i mean because i don't know that you you, you have learned the these three basic uh, prerequisite or not uh, what i'm talking about the wave and oscillation thermodynamics and uh, statistical physics did you have gone through that or um, then accordingly you know i will i will i will try to explain things Anyone? Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, wave and oscillation is a uh, little bit okay, sir, but thermodynamics is not much clear. And uh, okay. I don't know about uh, what it is called uh, statistical physics. Statistical mechanics. Okay. Yes. So basically, you know, in the thermodynamics itself, when you go along with the uh, thermodynamics part, then statistical mechanics will come into picture where, uh, you know, we have. I mean, these things are explained in detail uh, because black body radiations and all those stuff are basically the stuff for the thermodynamics itself. So let me see, let me see. Uh, otherwise, what I'll do, I will, I will try to prepare, but you know, it's obviously time consuming, uh, but I will try, okay? I will try to explain you people, uh, you know, a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of, um, Okay, so we have learned a few topics in higher secondary level. So yeah, so that is not going to help basically, you know, as I said that quantum mechanics is built up on many, many classical physics and classical physics include, uh, you know, uh, as I said in before in, in one of the slide that that needs uh, these three stuff to be done before coming to understand these things, okay? But anyway, I will try, okay? I will try to go back on few of the things and let me also ask organizer maybe he can organize that topic for you separately so that you can have some of the basic knowledge from there and that is going to be used in here does it sound good you happy with that uh, thank you yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah very good okay Nice, nice to, so nice to see you all people here and uh, let me stop now and uh, we will uh, see you in the next session of uh, electrodynamics in next Saturday. And on Sunday, I will again talk about quantum mechanics, but since these things comes into my mind, so let me see how, how we can manage. Okay, so see you and thank you to join. Uh, so mm -hmm. let me- uh, Thank you, sir. No problem, very welcome. So let me stop, uh, uh, share, and stop recording.